Okay guys, in our second part of our lecture today, we're going to look at energy and how we can calculate energy changes. Before we get into the calculations though, we really need to make a definition for energy. Energy is actually a physics term. We borrow it for, for chemistry um, and we consider it to be the capacity to do work. And capacity in this definition means the ability to do work. There are many different forms of energy. Uh, in this figure here that I found, we have kinetic energy, which is the energy of movement, and potential energy, stored energy. And then there are all different kinds of uh, subcategories of energy based on whether the energy is moving energy or energy is coming from a stored amount of energy that will be used later. And you can pause the tape and take a look at that. You do need to know some different forms of energy, but you don't need to memorize the entire list. One other thing you need to understand before we get into calculating energy is that there is a law about energy and its conservation. The law tells us that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It gets transferred. So all the different forms of energy that you see here, the energy is transferred from one form to another, and we're going to investigate that more as we get into this chapter. We can quantify energy. There are two different energy units that we look at. The calorie, which please note, it is a... Um, a lowercase letter right here, lowercase c. This is extremely important. You cannot make the mistake of having a capital C when you're talking about calories. A capital C is a food calorie, which we'll talk about in a few seconds. But the lowercase c calorie is the amount of energy in terms of heat that is required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. The SI unit for energy is the joule, right here, and we do need to know this, that the joule is the SI unit for energy, and of course we could have kilojoules, millijoules, our metric prefixes work just the same for these. Same thing with calories. Um, we can convert between calories and joules right here. Um, this is something you do need to know that one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. This is another equality that you're going to have to have memorized. One additional fun fact here is that a food calorie is a capital C right here. This is a food calorie, and it happens to be a kilocalorie of energy, which, of course, you remember there are a thousand base units in a kilo prefix, so there are a thousand calories in one kilocalorie. This part you're expected to know. If we take a look at our example here, a bar of chocolate contains 230 food calories. What is this energy in joules? Well, we start with 250 food calories, and we have to build conversions. So we know that one food calorie is equal to 1,000 calories. When we divide, our calories cancel out. Then there's one calorie in 4.184 joules, so we build a second conversion factor in order to cancel out calories. We're left with joules. When you do this on your calculator, you should get 1.04 times 10 to the 6 joules, but because we started with only two significant figures, our answer can only be reported with two significant figures. Please stop right now and make sure you get this on your calculator. Also, please make sure you, exam you uh, write down this example in its entirety. So, how do substances respond to being heated? We look at something called specific heat, which is represented with a lowercase s. Specific heat is very similar to the calorie only this time, we're not talking about only water. The amount of energy required to change the temperature of one gram of any substance by one degree Celsius is that substance's specific heat. Specific heat is individual for each independent substance, meaning we can identify an unknown substance by measuring its specific heat.
The units of specific heat are calories per gram times degrees Celsius. And I do know, notice here that I did not have a degree sign. So let me try to write one in. We also have a special specific heat for water. The specific heat for water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius, which is also equal to 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Yes, one thing to note, grams and degrees Celsius are both in the denominator. If we were to write this as a fraction, we would write this as one calorie per gram degree Celsius. It's a derived unit, just like density. One thing that you need to know is this equation. We have a new equation, just like our density equation. The equation for energy, energy is Q. This is energy. Energy is equal to S M delta T. S is specific heat. M is the mass of the object in grams. You must be in grams, not kilograms. And delta T is your final temperature minus your initial temperature. It has to be final minus initial because you are allowed to get a negative answer in terms of energy. Let's take a look at this first example. Please pause the tape and copy down the example before I continue. Got it written down? Good. Let's take a look. Example one tells us to calculate the energy required to heat 454 grams of water from 5.4 degrees Celsius to 98.6 degrees Celsius. The first thing we need to do is calculate our delta T. Delta T is equal to our final temperature minus our initial temperature. So we have 98.6 degrees C minus 5.4 degrees C. And that gets us 93.2 degrees C. The reason why we have to be, we have to subtract the initial from the final is because if the substance is cooling, the energy is going to be negative. Your final temperature is less than your initial temperature and you get a negative energy because the energy went outward into the surrounding area. That's real important. In this particular example, our object heated. So we will have positive energy because the energy is going into the object. All right, let's see what we have here. We now have delta T. We have a mass. The given mass is 454 grams. And we are given that the substance is water. This is real important here, guys, because we are expected to remember that water has a specific heat of 4.184 joules per grams degree C. That's something we have to remember. Now what we're going to do is plug all of this into our energy equation. Q equals S M delta T. This becomes a plug and chug problem now. Our S is 4.184 joules per grams degree Celsius times our mass. Oops, I forgot a G up there. 454 grams times our delta T, 93.2 degrees C. When we plug and chug, we take a look here, and our grams will cancel out, and our degree Celsius cancels out. We are left with simply joules, and joules is a unit of energy. Your calculator answer should give you 
36.7552 joules. Because of significant figures, we can only keep three significant figures in this problem. So our final answer will be written as 1.77 times 10 to the fifth joules. Please pause the tape right now and make sure you get this answer on your calculator. All right, last example for the night, and then you guys can do whatever it is you need to do or whatever you want to do. Please pause the tape now and copy down the example. Okay, hopefully you copy down the example in your notes. A 2.8 gram sample of pure metal requires 10.1 joules of energy to change its temperature from 21 degrees Celsius to 36 degrees Celsius. What is the metal? You're going to need your book. If you don't have it, I will help you out now, but I do want you to check table 3.2 in your book when you do the book problems. Let's take a look at how we solve this problem. We know this is an energy problem. Our best bet is to start with a list of variables, Q, S, M, and delta T. In this particular case, we're given energy. We're not going to solve for it, so our Q is 10.1 joules. We are not told what the metal is. It asks us what the metal is, so we don't know what S is. Looks like we're going to be solving for S. The mass of the sample is given to us as 2.8 grams, and delta T is not given to us, but we can calculate it. So we take our final minus our initial temperature, and we get 36 degrees C minus 21 degrees C. Our in change in temperature, therefore, is 15 degrees Celsius. Now this becomes a plug and a sort of chug type of an equation. We do have to solve, though, for a different variable. We start with Q equals SM delta T. And SM and delta T are all multiplied together. So what do we do in order to get S by itself? You're right. We divide by M and delta T. So S, specific heat, is equal to Q, which is 10.1 joules, divided by the mass, 2.8 grams, times the delta T, 15 degrees C. I see, I forgot my C. Notice none of the units cancel out. Well, that's perfect because one of the units of specific heat is joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius. Looks like we set this problem up right. So go ahead, run your numbers. We should end up with a calculator answer of 0 0.240476. Looking at all of our data here, we can only keep two significant figures, so we will report 0 0.24 joules per grams degrees Celsius. Nothing cancels out. We're stuck with all of those units. This is our S. If you have your book with you and you look up on table 3.2, you will find out that this metal is silver. Have a great night, and I'll see you in the morning.